Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 11th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Reverse engineering malware is, of course, often shrouded under uh, this mystery of reverse analysis of machine code and the like. And, well, uh, probably our reverse analysis of malware and our intrusion detection classes are sort of our truly technical uh, defensive classes. But we do have a nice set of uh, diaries by DDA from this weekend about demystifying this process somewhat and coming up with simpler methods to figure out what malware may potentially be doing. By quickly, well, looking for interesting strings. And DDA, of course, has a tool to make this easier, his strings.py tool. So he's running through a couple use cases there. And before you say, hey, you know, there is possible of false positives, false negatives here, all true. But uh, personally, I find these methods really helpful sort of for initial triage of malware. Before I figure out that a malware is actually worth the hours of reversing, because honestly, 99% of the malware that you'll see are just small variations of malware that you probably have looked at before. And often I'm talking about research projects that are being presented. Uh, like, for example, Friday we had another science.edu student, but also research papers and such uh, being published by other universities. But uh, for a change, I have actually a paper where they're still waiting for input. And I think the topic is really interesting and important. So I would like to give them a little bit more exposure here. It's not an easy survey to fill out. And well, doing good surveys is actually quite uh, difficult. In this particular case, they're trying to figure out how reliable is the CVSS score? The CVSS score is often used to indicate how severe a particular vulnerability is. But of course, it's a little bit of a mechanical system. And what they're trying to figure out is how accurate and how useful this CVSS score is in actual uh, real world networks. So if you're dealing with vulnerability management and such, take a look at their survey. And as so often, we, of course, do have malware writers taking advantage of uh, large uh, political events in the news, like, for example, the events in Washington, D.C. last week. The latest uh, example here is a Trump sex video that actually came out at the beginning of last week. And, well, no, it's not an actual video. Instead, it's just a malware. So nothing really new and exciting here, but just something to be aware of. Also around COVID, of course, still being a big topic, COVID vaccination and such is also being used as a lure for malicious content. And talking about COVID-19, one particular trick that apparently is currently being used is uh, to send SMS messages that uh, trick users into supposedly signing up for the COVID-19 vaccine appointment. And of course, that is then just being used to steal personal information. In part, as uh, the article uh, by HealthNet Security uh, points out, uh, this is just the result of a lot of the sort of government and official communications these days using SMS messages or pop-up messages like these alert systems, which to many users aren't really all that distinguishable from SMS messages. And of course, in particular, less tech savvy elderly victims are more likely going to fall here because they're often sort of one of the priority populations for the vaccine. Well, the last story I added, not because it's important, but because I think it makes uh, two important points. Uh, First of all, the vulnerability that I'm talking about here is a vulnerability in DNS Recon, uh, the penetration testing tool. And apparently it doesn't 
properly sanitized text records that are being retrieved. And if you are saving the data as a CSV file, well, a CSV data can be injected. The reason this is sort of interesting is that I quite often see security tools that don't properly validate DNS data. DNS data should be considered untrusted. It's coming from random DNS servers on the internet. And of course, in particular, if you're dealing with something like text records, pretty much sort of anything printable goes. Second point, attack tools, just like security tools, are not immune from vulnerabilities. So be aware that uh, your penetration testing tools can also attack the attacker. And well, it's probably even better uh, to ask for permission before using them. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.